My next speaker is the famous Scott Bourne. Many of you have already heard, um, most of us have seen his Twitters. He's an amazing uh, photographer to start off with. Uh, digital media pioneer, been involved in photography more than three decades. Wow. Must have been like five when he started. He publishes photofocus.com, uh, which is one of the, I've actually checked it out and I love to check out that site. It's one of the most informational photographers sites anywhere. Um, Scott has a following on Twitter of 63,000 people and is ranked as the most influential photographer on Twitter, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna invite Scott Bourne up to the stage. Welcome, Scott. It's an honor and a privilege to be invited by Kevin Kubota to participate in anything he's involved in. And it's a greater honor to speak with the group I'm speaking with. Today I want to talk about sight. We're going to bring it down a little bit, as we say in the DJ business. We're going to slow it down for you. We're going to talk about something important, pre-visualization. It's not the zone system. This isn't about Ansel Adams. It's not about figuring out how to move this gray to that gray. It's about seeing what you want to see before you see it. It's about seeing it someplace other than in the lens. I did my master's thesis on this guy, and of course you've probably heard this photograph. You don't take a photograph, you make it. And we end each episode of Photo Focus, the podcast, with a similar saying, because I need to constantly remind myself that that's what I do. Here I made a photograph by laying on the ground, changing the perspective, and making this group of tulips that's only actually about two feet away, look like it's far away. Now when I was laying on the ground, I was still 36 inches high. But, it nearly worked. <laughs> Do you ever daydream about the perfect photograph? And I'm not talking about the one in Playboy. <laughs> Do you ever think, wow, this would be a great image? That's happened to me, and it's changed my life. Pre-visualization is really more about what you see here than what you see here. What you see here is what creates emotion, not what you see here. It starts up here. You want to start thinking about panoramic photography, you're going to end up shooting more panoramic photography. You can think about it without the camera. All you need to do is have a brain, and you can do stuff like this. Grand Teton National Park. I went there thinking about panoramas because the thing is so freaking big. And so this is a 60-inch print that hangs on the governor of Wyoming's wall. And I'm not him, by the way. Shoot more HDR, you say? Well, you need to start thinking in HDR. Stop thinking about the limitations you see with your eyes. That will kill you. Start thinking about what's possible here. Mixing these three images while drinking my Mai Tai created a beautiful HDR. I thought about HDR before I went to Hawaii, and lo and behold, guess what I ended up doing? I made some HDR. Duh. It's not that tough, folks. Another thing I see people do, I lead a lot of workshops, they get out there and I take them someplace with bald eagles and they go, eagles! <laughs> you know, machine gun approach isn't gonna give you anything usable. Slow down. All you youngins, tomorrow's okay. This is a place near where I live. It's the Tacoma Glass Museum. It's Dale Chihuly's Hot Shop. I wanted to make a picture nobody ever made. There are 40 million pictures of this place. This is the one that they use on the brochure because I saw it one day when this big cloud came over. I wanted to be involved in something beyond just taking a picture. I wanted to participate. I wanted to make it happen. And you can only do that if you use your brain. That's it. Your brain is the number one tools of photographer. This is really hard to do in five minutes. Okay, I'm about to give you an hour and a half's worth of information in less than 60 seconds. Ready to retain? Deep breath. I was told, oh, you know what? I think this is messing up, Kevin. <laughs> this is way more than five minutes on the title of the slide. Technical difficulties? This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. If this were not a test, you'd be advised where to tune in your area for emergency information. This is only a test. Is this, oh, here we go, daydreaming, sketching, storyboarding, post-processing. Come on, come on, you can do it. I know you can do it. I get like an extra 30 seconds, right, Kevin? This is a technical difficulty I'm not responsible for. 
Slide advancer, please advance. Thank you. Thinking of your raw file as a musical score is something that you probably also heard Ansel say, only he said it with a negative. The negative is the score, the print is the performance. You can think of your raw file as the score. Now I want to talk to you about a photograph that haunted me for 13 years. I spent 13 years seeing this photograph here before I could see it here. I don't recommend spending that long to make a photograph. <laughs> However, it's my number one selling image. We're going to have to do this thing again. There we go. I had to find the right place at the right time with an eastern view when there's fog and mist where there are birds on a cloudless day when they'll take off later than when I'm shooting with a west wind and an isolated pair coming into the photograph. Now that's pretty easy, isn't it? <laughs> Don't have a vision like this if you want to be sane. 13 years I, I chased this photograph. 13 years. I went looking for it. There it is. I pray to God I don't get another vision. <laughs> Cranes in the Fire Mist has been very successful for me, but it led me to the most important thing I'm ever going to do, which is to ask you this question. What is possible for you? What can you think of in your mind's eye? Thank you.